greatest thing about this, it is five miles from downtown Mount Airy, North Carolina, where you can visit the Andy Griffin Museum and also the Andy Griffin Playhouse. Now today, I wasn't crazy about downtown because 250,000 people have invaded downtown area for a fall festival. It is wild and crazy, so I definitely suggest a weekend when it is not quite so crowded. But take a trip. It's about six hours from our area, and it is a beautiful, beautiful drive. Come out and get to know the nice folks at the Mayberry Campground. Full hookup, everything you need. All you do is pull in, undo, hit, hook up your electricity, put your jacks down, and you are ready to go. Remember, this is only five miles from downtown Mount Airy, which is where Mayberry got its start. And uh, you'll remember, Andy Griffith's now 50 years in the works on television make plans to take a trip to Mount Airy, North Carolina. Welcome to Taylorsville, North Carolina, way, way, way back in the woods in Taylorsville, North Carolina. And I have to say, the drive in here was incredible. It was absolutely gorgeous. So many old houses, and I'm looking to this side of the road, looking to that side of the road, and I'm trying to take it all in, and I'm thinking, wow, I'd love to spend a whole day up here. The area is absolutely gorgeous, but we had a mission. The mission was to come to spend some time with Jerry Rushing. If you love the Dukes of Hazard like I did, and everybody knows my nickname used to be Boss Hog because I'm a get her done kind of girl. And um, love, love, love that television program. So many people grew up watching Dukes of Hazard. Now, not everybody knows that the Dukes of Hazard was generally based on a young man's life and a young man's story. And the young man might be Jerry Rushing. It's a little older now. Just a little older. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you want me to interview Sadie first or interview you? Well, either one. She's Sadie, most important. What you got going on, little girl? What you got going on? Huh? So I spend my time just looking after my daddy. Uh huh. Now, is daddy a good boy? And do you get a little snack here or there? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We go out to lunch, me and the boys, when the hunts are over. You know, we we'll go out to lunch and we go usually go up to Porky's. And if you go up there, she's sitting in the car and wait. When you come out, you better have a takeout. <laughs> you if better you don't, have she won't go catch you for two days. <laughs> She'll sell uh, up, won't look at you, she gets mad. I'm with you, I'm with you, yeah. Now, Jerry, let's talk a little bit about, number one, we're in a wonderful hunting lodge. Now, is this kind of retirement for you? And yeah, it's something I just play around with. Uh -huh. I always enjoyed hunting, and I don't do much hunting anymore myself, but I like taking people out. And mm -hmm. They like to go run them wild hogs. The woods around here, this is absolutely gorgeous. That's right, pretty little mountains. And beautiful, beautiful. Good spring water. Have you spent your life here? No, I originally was born in Monroe, and then I moved up here in the 80s uh -huh. after we got the Dukes of Hazard underway. Right. Now let's talk a little bit about the Dukes of Hazard. When that started, not many people had family members in my family, a lot of moonshiners in our family, and so we knew the history of what happened, and most people made shine to support their families and to feed their families, not yeah. to get rich and famous. Yeah, uh, my daddy made some whiskey, my grandpa, and about all of his brothers made some whiskey. And mm -hmm. It was kind of a family trade, and uh, I was about the last one, you know, to right. come along and as I say, push a good stick too far. <laughs> right, right. Now let's talk a little bit about driving these hills. Oh, yeah. Because the hills of North Carolina are a lot like the hills of Georgia. A lot of race car drivers came out of these hills mm -hmm. based on a little bit of shine in some of their families, too. Yeah, Junior Johnson and, uh, uh, well, the Petties, you know, they right. used to run shine. Right. Old Wendell Scott, he ran a lot of whiskey. Uh-huh. And uh, most of the old race car drivers, really, were moonshiners that had the talent to drive, and right. I was driving a car when I was 12 year old. This daddy'd send me out with the load, and I'm just a kid, you know. But years. I could run, outrun about any of them, you know. I was always was a pretty expert driver. And then when I got a little older, about 15, I started racing, and uh, 
I drove about 12 years, mm -hmm. run some with uh, the Petties and old Dale Jarrett, Steady, and uh, Pearson and Yarbrough and some of them back in the old right, days. Right, back when racing was racing. Yeah, Bob Isaac and a whole bunch of them old ones. Wow. Fireball and Speedy Thompson. Now, you said a magic word, Junior Johnson. He, he <laughs> was like the granddaddy of racing. Yeah. So much respect for that man. So yep. much respect for him. I did a couple of films with him for one I think they're using at the uh, new museum mm -hmm. and we did something for the History Channel a time or two and uh, then we interviewed Junior you know on that van we're working on and right. I see him every once in a while. Right. I used to see him a lot more often than <laughs> Now as, as, a, as, a, as a moonshiner did you ever think about your life story being on television and in film? Never crossed my mind. Mm -mm. How did all this happen? Uh, I wrote a song called Mama Had to Pay. One day I got to thinking about all this stuff and I thought, well, you know, it's, we're the one that goes to jail. Right. And we think, well, poor me, you know, mm -hmm. but it, you're not the one that has to pay. It's your mother who sat out on the doorsteps till two o'clock in the morning to hear your car coming back. Right. And when you was out racing, she'd be sitting on the doorsteps when you come in at night. We didn't think nothing about that. I got to think what she has to pay, and so I, I wrote the song about it. And this guy heard it, and he said, uh, "Well, John Swears who writes for Charlie Pride and uh, Ronnie Millsap, mm -hmm. he wrote the uh, song The Girl Waits on Tables." He went on one of my hunts one time, and. He uh, went back and wrote that song because my wife waited on us at a seafood restaurant. And he wrote The uh, Girl Waits on Table and sent her a copy before uh, recording. He wrote a, Amazing Love sitting on one of my stands out hunting. Wow. But uh, they told me to take it to somebody, and I asked him about working with it. And he said, Jerry, I'll be honest with you, I can't really do it because I'm trying to get mine published. And right. he said, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, but take it to somebody. And somebody told me, well, Bob Clark handle some music. So I kind of shyly walked in there and said, why, well, I got a song. He wanted to hear it and he said he had heard of me all his, all his life. And mm -hmm. he said, we just never met, but he was a lawyer in the same town there. And he said, well, let me see what I can do. So he said, he called me back and said, would you consider letting us write your life story in some moonshine script? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't know. And he said, well, I got a friend down in Georgia, Guy Walter, and that wants to write a moonshine script and he don't have the color for it. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, go home and write this stuff up. And I said, man, I can't write all that stuff. He said, well, put it on tape. So I walked in there. I went home. I sat out on the table with a tape recorder. I talked all night long wow. and quit the next morning at 8 o'clock about old tales and stories. He said, man, I can see a 10-year TV series in these tapes. Mm -hmm. and so we worked out a deal that they'd take it and then guy came up and stayed with me and they wrote it into Moon Runners. Mm -hmm. And then they took Moon Runners after that. Guy wrote Moon Runners and it, it done good for its time. And then he took the material I had left and a lot out of Moon Runners and went and wrote The Dukes of Hazard. Mm -hmm. And if I had an old race car I drove on the road and then I'd haul whiskey on it on the weekend and drive it to church on Sunday. I guess oh, you wow. call it a business <laughs> coop. <laughs> but, uh, and that's how it got started and mm -hmm. it just went went from there and turned out to be one of the hottest TV shows. Absolutely and today. The, Still today. Yeah, and it's one of the most famous cars in the world. Absolutely. I Absolutely. never dreamed of it. And then Larry took the old Chrysler I had and he, uh, he bought it from somebody that restored it. That was the whole card I haul whiskey on. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got it now and that's where he's doing a little film on that now. That car wow. we called it the Traveler after General Lee's horse. Oh gosh. <laughs> but we'd always named her cars and then we'd race them, you know, we had numbers on the doors and all that stuff. But of course Did your mother live different. to see the Dukes of Hazard? No, no. I see. Wait a minute. Yeah, I guess she did. Do you think she understood the important part she played in this? Uh, no, she didn't. Because really you like wrote a song either. about your mama. 
Yeah. Who then you turned it in to turn it in to turn it in, and it just kept turning around, and then your life really did take a change. Yeah, she really didn't like for me to talk about it all oh. lot, you know. But, <laughs> but uh, I had a brother, and so it was kind of based off of me and my brother. Mm -hmm. And my brother, he got killed in a car wreck. Oh, wow. You know, he actually had a heart attack and ran off the road and throwed him out, and the car turned over on him, and we lost him. Out of the characters of Dukes of Hazard, who are you the most like? Who do I like most? Who are you the most like? Uh, well, I was a little mixture of all of them, I guess. I was pretty rowdy. I wasn't that Surely not. Boy, you know. Surely not. Surely uh, not. I used to like to fight pretty good when I was young. <laughs> but they kind of wrote John's part after me because I raced and mm -hmm. right. did all that stuff and shot the bows and arrows. We Got on probation, had to hunt with bow and arrow and all that uh -huh, stuff. Uh -huh. Is there anybody in your life like Boss Hogg? Yeah, they sure was. He's dead now, but they wrote, actually his name was Jay Lee, mm -hmm. and they called him Hogjaw, and that's where a guy got the name of J.D. Hogg. Oh, wow. And uh, Daisy was my first cousin. Mm -hmm. And except she was more beautiful than the real one. Yeah, oh, really? she was a dream. Wow. Now, she still lives down at Monroe. Oh. And uh, she was, uh, we wrote about her, and her daddy was my Uncle Worley. He was Uncle Jesse. Mm -hmm. He'd get about half lit, and then he'd get up preaching to all these old drunks <laughs> sitting around a table, you know. And, He'd say, you're going to hell if you don't quit drinking that liquor. And he'd beat on the table, you know. And uh, at, a lot of times I thought he was called to preach and just kind of resisted it. Because right. when he'd get drinking, he'd start preaching to all yeah, the rest yeah. of them. Yeah. But we, Uncle Jesse was after him. And, of course, Boss Hogg was after Jay Lee. Mm -hmm. And uh, Enos was a character was... Oh, I'm going to get killed for this. <laughs> Go ahead. Actually, Nobody's watching. <laughs> he was actually my brother-in-law. <laughs> he wanted to be a deputy sheriff so bad that he would uh, go get him a low holster like a cowboy and he'd go up to the sheriff's department and ride around with him. And uh, he, uh, one day he was down on the river and, you know, Enos is always saying, hold it, bing, yeah. and like, well, where that came from? <laughs> He was down on the river, and they got bought him a pair of handcuffs, and he was down there, and he didn't know nobody was around the game more than slipped up on him just watching him. He'd, he'd say, all right, hold it right there, and he'd jerk that pistol out, and he'd say, if you move, I'll blow your brains out. And he'd go over like his handcuff in the tree, and that game warden sat there and watched him a little bit, and he said, about got it worked out, bub, and he said he jumped about that <laughs> But they don't kill me for that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, everybody has a Barney Fife in their life, and everybody has an Enos. So and, now uh, we know who your Enos was. And uh, Cooter was wrote after Jim Hogan, his friend of mine. That he's dead now. About everybody's dying. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the old ones. And uh, ever what. Me and my brother done, he looked at me like I was John Wayne. If I'd have told him, go over and shoot him, he's bothered me. He'd have went over and shot him. I mean, yeah. he just that way. Mm -hmm. He just kind of thought we were the only things on earth, you know, and he'd hang out with us and whatever we was going to do, he was going to go mm -hmm. on. I know I was going to talk him into wrecking a car when we was doing moon runners. And I said, Ho. Why don't you run that? He said, boy, I wouldn't do that stunt for nothing. So somebody's going to get killed and they crash that car off in that creek. I said, you know who? I said, you know, if you drove that car in that creek, you might get killed. But I said, people talk about that at Monroe for a long time. <laughs> a long time he long. said, I'm doing it. That's mine. I'm going to go tell a guy I want to do this stuff. <laughs> uh, now, let's talk a little bit about the driving. When you were driving and doing shine, there wasn't a lot of traffic in this area, was Not there? like it, no. There's too much traffic. Today now. it couldn't happen. No, I mean, it just no. And we had a lot of dirt roads. Mm -hmm. And I was a terror on a dirt road. I wow. mean, there wasn't nobody in the world I thought could catch me on a dirt road. Were you ever, did you ever really put your life in jeopardy to a point that you got home and said, wow, I can't believe I made this? And, and ha did you ever think I'm stupid? Yeah. Yeah. 
but I was just crazy enough to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think anybody could catch me in a car. And Did revenueers have a bounty kind of out on you, like because oh, they couldn't catch they you? Oh, was after me. They had, they followed me 44 nights with 21 cars. And one would get behind me and he'd tell me a while and I'd turn off and he'd go on. Another one pick me up across the road, they'd keep changing. I knew it was revenueers. And, but I would be going along and I'd turn off a road Well, they'd go on. Well, I'd whoop off in a little old dirt road that went out to a field. And I might go five or ten miles through the woods and come out on another highway, and then I'd meet one over there. They had their cars, 21 of them spread out, and they followed me 21 nights, and uh, they told them, said, you know, you all going to have to drop it. It's costing too much money. Well, back then, all $100 was like 10000 now. Yeah. But uh, they said they'd done spent $150,000 and didn't have any results because I'd Go, come out on another road and go through a, another patch of woods. I knew all those sawmill roads, and I'd finally get a chance to dart in the road that went into the steel, and uh, they was going to have to quit the next day. And this, supposedly my friend got caught. And so he told me if they dropped the charges, not give him no time, he'd tell them where that steel was at. Oh, my gosh. Are you and, still friends with him today? No, he's dead now. Okay, all right. <laughs> and uh, so they come in, caught my buddy at the steel, or I didn't catch him at the steel. We had went to the race the night before because I had to race that night. Well, he always carried some moonshine. Well, I just rode up in the moon runners where mm -hmm. they'd take to the race and give mm -hmm. everybody a little shot. And, right. Uh, at night, I went through the fence and broke my neck. And so they blowed the steel up that evening. That night I had a bad crash and uh, broke my neck. And I woke up in the hospital in Lancaster, South Carolina, and he was in the bed, next bed over. And he had went to talk to a lawyer because it about busted that evening. They arrested him that evening. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he got so upset he took a migraine headache, so well, they had to take him to the hospital. <laughs> so that was really a bad day. That was a bad day. We bad lost day. the steel. And a race car. Race car. Broke and about, the neck. About got killed. Yeah, that's, that, that's not a good day. That is not a good day. That was a bad one. <laughs> that's a bad day. Now tell me about today. What is your life like today? Uh, I have mellowed out. Uh, don't, Not a wild and crazy man anymore. No, I don't no. fire off and do that crazy stuff. And I do a lot of talks at churches and places like that. And I travel some of the prison ministry to try to get some of the people, help them change their life and right. tell them what happened to me. And after I turned my life over to God and quit all this stuff, how wonderful things is mm -hmm. and how great God has made it for mm -hmm. me. And uh, I've had several of them to write me back and say they read my book and they'd got saved and uh, mm -hmm. they had quit all their stuff and a uh, boy called me wanting to bring a little guy to see me this past week and I told him to bring him on and he said that he uh, wouldn't go to church and he wouldn't, uh, they talked about how many hypocrites in church and he said he told him, said I agree with you son, right. he said there's some good people there. And so he wanted to bring him over and let me tell him what all would happen to me. And he just worshiped the Dukes of Hazzard. Mm -hmm. So that has hoped a lot to get a lot of people to change their life over it. I get calls and stuff all the time where mm -hmm. people tell me, I decided if you could do it, I could do it. You really made Run into one of my cousins that's had 25 years to go or something. Maybe he got 25 <laughs> while I was doing the prison thing. And, uh, he wrote me after that and told me he decided if I could change my life, he could. And said he got saved and he was uh, living right and quitting all this stuff. <laughs> that really makes you feel good. But oh, yeah. No, I, I got away from all that crazy stuff. I moved up here, really, in one way to get away from all of it because all my friends come by. And, <laughs> uh, one day, two of my old buddies come by. And, and one of them introduced me to John Gotti. And uh, he come by to see me, and he was talking about all these things that they were doing, you know. And 
one day left, she said, my daughter said, Daddy, I know you're not ever going to do anything else. Mm -hmm. She said, but you don't need to be around them boys. Right. I said, I know. She said, because when they get to talking them con games, she said, I can see that little twinkle mm -hmm. in your eye. Mm -hmm. You know, and it will mm -hmm. if you don't watch it. Mm -hmm. But that's basically now I hunt, and I like to trap coyotes. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorite things. People mm -hmm. they get to eating their cats and their baby calves, and I do a lot of trapping on them. I, I love to do that. And I'm just kind of doing a laid-back life. And Well, I wish you'd have been in the motorhome with us when we turned in the road. Because we said, I said, did you tell him we're in a 40-foot motor home? He said, yeah. I said, I don't believe the man hears well. <laughs> because I bet he thought you said a Ford truck. <laughs> I said, we can't take this motor home down this road. Well, Duke's a hazard driver over here decided he could. Yeah. So we're coming down there and we get to your little bridge. And I said, you know, this thing weighs 30,000 pounds. Well, he gets out and walks over the bridge. And I'm thinking... How's he judging this? He weighs 205 and he's walking on a bridge and he's judging. It'll hold up a, a military tank. <laughs> it did. How did you choose this location? A friend of mine had some land up in here and he told me about it. and So I decided I'd get up here and look at it when I come up here. I just kind of fell in love with it. How the many acres do you have? Oh gosh, I don't even know how many I got. I got about five miles back that way. Just and from uh -huh. one road to the next. And, wow. And uh, it's a big spread in here. And I can get out there and ride a four-wheel around all day if I want to. And <laughs> I got deer and all kind of stuff in here. And every evening there's a lot of deer out here in the yard. And it's now, just the place for me. I, the hunting. All these all these animals. Are these things, are your, Are these your trophies? Yeah, they're on the, I got all this stuff on the hunt. Okay. Turkey. I see a big old turkey feather over there. Yeah. And I see uh, uh, that's a rams, beautiful deer. deer. Yeah. Did that turkey come off this property? Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now my daughter can carve a turkey head better than that wow. one up there. Really? Out of wood. Mm. She just beat the world champion in the contest. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, it took her day. She got a thousand dollars and uh, she had a mama squirrel carved in a hole in the stump. Uh -huh. with babies. And everybody looked at it and said, that's some good taxidermy work. She said, that's not taxidermy, that's wood. Wow. I ain't no way that's wood. And it they, was. That point. We've had a lot of interesting people where we had um, all the bombardiers from the Coral Sea come up here and uh, Fernando Leon from the Dominion Republic. He had come up here and offered to let us stay in his uh, uh, castles over it, uh, and uh, we had uh, the Golden Knights and a lot. All of Donald Trump's head men come down here one time. Mm -hmm. Blowed my mind. They all come <laughs> here. I bet you blew their mind too. <laughs> and they started unloading gambling equipment. I said, what are y'all doing? They said, Oh, we brought this along the place that we play back in New Jersey off of this. And oh uh, those boys were some characters. <laughs> When, uh, did they come to actually hunt? Yeah. Wow. Sure did. And now, uh, how do people find out about you? Yeah, we are in most of, we used to be in all the magazines and on the internet. And uh, we've There's not a country in the world we had not hunted somebody from. We've hunted okay. from Africa, Japan, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, Canada, you name it, and they've been somebody here. Wow. Now tell me, what would a guy, if, if a lady wants to give her husband one of your hunts for Christmas, what's it going to set her back? Well, if she wants to hunt like boar, we get $700 and we okay. furnish her. Now and that's per kill. Now, that's okay. guaranteed. Okay. And then they stay here at the lodge. There's no charge for that. And uh, we field dress their animals, skin them out, quarter them up, everything. My guides do that. Uh -huh. And uh, they, a lot of them do give them for Christmas. Mm -hmm. for I started Christmas to say, stuff. $700 they, is reasonable for your yeah. husband for Christmas. So that's very reasonable. Now, what's one of the more expensive? What what else do you do? Uh, buffalo and uh, stuff like that. And uh, we, we get some Ibex. We have all kinds of stuff. Get stuff from everywhere. Wow. And uh, some uh, like big bull buffaloes. We uh, just shot a buffalo and uh, thirty five hundred dollars, but he weighed twenty five hundred pounds. And that steak's about twenty dollars a pound. So I was going to ask you, does all that meat get processed? Yeah, they they take all that meat back with them. Oh, they, 
process as needed. Oh my gosh, twenty five hundred. That buffalo boy had to buy three freezers. To oh my lord! Out. And that's a thirty five hundred dollar hunt. Yeah, a big bull. Oh my goodness. He was a monster. He's standing about seven and a half feet at the shoulders. Oh. Now, how did you get involved in the hunt thing? Did you just you always were done that from a kid and just mm -hmm. wanted to do it? And I'd always dreamed about a place like this, and mm -hmm. you know, I grew up farm boy. And we couldn't afford it, and then when I got older, and I thought, well, this is what I'm going to do, and I made a little money off the Duke's Hazard, right. and got into movies, you know, and okay. started making a little bit of money. I said, I'm going to buy me some land while I can afford it, and I'm going to do what I want to. So I just. Right. So I bought it, and then I started working on it. Tell us about the other movies you've been in. Tell me some. I see. You know, I was in The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia with Dennis Quaid. I love that movie. And uh, Moon Runners, uh, Dukes of Hazard, and Young Daniel Boone. I was a regular on the Young Daniel Boone show until it got canceled. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, gosh. Let me think of some of them. You, you know, I never think about these movie stuff, but I've been in probably the TVs, DVDs, and the different things about 60 all told. That's awesome. That is awesome. And uh, I've worked with John Houston down in Georgia on that, uh, what was it he done down there? I know he wouldn't have nobody for the part but me, so no, I want him. I don't know. Freddie, do you know? And, no. uh, uh Gosh, and I was in Day of Judgment, Good Baby. Uh, gosh, what was it? Did you just take to it naturally? They didn't have to, because you just pretty much were yourself, or how did you do that? Yeah, I did. Did you step into a role? I'd get a role, and it was always somebody I knew, somebody like mm -hmm. that character, mm -hmm. and I'd just play them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, Wise Blood, that was the name of that film Houston okay. did, yeah. But Earl Owensby, I've done some of his films, but he told me, he said, look, I'd give you $10,000, just let me go down there and play that part. Just to say, I've done a film with John Houston. Wow. And I said, well, what, what about John Houston? He said, he's just the most famous director in the world. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what that means? He said, I'd give, pay you money <laughs> and give you what I made. And, and I said, oh, well, I guess it was worthwhile. Yeah, so you've rubbed elbows with some pretty famous Oh, yeah, I've worked with yeah. uh, all Claude Aiken and all them. And about every Ned Beatty and Warren Oates and the Mitchums. I stayed out at the Mitchums' house oh, for a while. I love Robert Mitchum. And uh, now Bob was a character. Oh, loved him, loved him. He, he uh, made, now I'm not a smoker, but he made smoking look like fun. You know? Jim does too. Oh, Jim man. does smokes every time he does a movie. He yeah, smokes just yeah, like his yeah. daddy did. But Robert was a character now. He was incredible. And he'd ever look at you and cock his eye like that. You better step back about two <laughs> cells. He's fixing me. All them boys are expert fighters. Wow. I talked to his brother not long ago. I called his brother. Uh, we, me and John done several films together. We did a... Uh, Western out in New Mexico. Warren Oates come by to see us while I was out there. And Slim Pickens, I worked with Slim. Uh -huh. I worked with Slim on several shows. He is, a, he was a wonderful old guy. Wow. But you know, most of those old ones are dead. They are. They are. And uh, Slim really paid me a great compliment, though. He said, Jerry, he said, they've been looking for somebody to take my place when I'm gone. They can't find them. He said, and me and Arthur Honeycutt was just talking about it a little while ago. They was always all doing a film together. He said, you can do it. Wow. He said, I'm going to tell my agent. If, you look, if you'll come out here and understand, uh, understudy me, he said, when I'm dead, you'll take my place. Mm -hmm. And she told me, she said, you come out here and I'll put you in every show that Slim's in uh, uh, to understudy him. Wow. And I told her, I said, I'd love to, but I can't live in California. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, Sunshine. She said, I cannot live in California. <laughs> I said, I can't do it. I'm a country yeah. boy. i got to go back home. And this baby don't want to go to California. No way. So I said, no, Daddy. As long as I'm riding, I don't much care. <laughs> Well, you know... Um, she rides on the four-wheeler everywhere I go when we're hunting. She's right on the back. She wants to hunt, but I won't let her hunt no more. And nothing but squirrels goes right here under her she arm her. there. There's a boar got her and 
He almost killed her. Mr. Lungs a half inch, and I said, you can't hunt No more. more. That's it. That's I it. said, I said, you got to stay on the floor where I'm take care of Papa. <laughs> She'll sit right there with me. Yeah. Now, do you have family that lives close by? Uh, my whole family does. Good, good. My, me and my wife live at the top of the hill. My daughter, granddaughter lives down here. Okay. All right. So this is paradise. This oh, is paradise. Oh, yeah. It's pretty yeah. much to yeah. me. My wife had rather live somewhere else, I think. Oh, it's but. beautiful. It's beautiful. But the drive in here was just incredible. So. And you know, nobody bothers us. We know it's a, it's a good place to live. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. Well, thank you so much for doing this. And well, I, I hope that welcome. folks will continue to watch the Dukes of Hazard. And now you know the gentleman that it's all about. And, and you know, you wouldn't have the General Lee and you wouldn't have the Daisy Dukes if it weren't for this man, Jerry Rushing. This is his life story. And I hope you will take a, a gander now. What's the name of your book? Uh, the real Duke of Hazard. The real Duke of Hazard. Get a, get a copy of that and, and see how anybody can turn their life around. And I think that's something awesome that you now get out and share your story with folks. Oh, yeah. Check out his life story. Do you have a website? Uh, yeah. Tell me what it is. JRushing.com. JRushing.com. Uh, get to know a little bit more about this man. And hey, ladies, here, I've done your Christmas shopping. Send him 700 bucks. Honey gets to come up here and go on a hunt. You get three days of shopping. So doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> From North Georgia now today, we are leaving. We're leaving North Carolina, headed back to Georgia. We'll see you again Monday morning.